Hello, this is Don uh, with uh, Two Saws Tips uh, channel. And today uh, we have a little bit over 50,000 miles in this 2024 Toyota Camry LE hybrid. And so we're going to change both the uh, radiator coolant and the inverter coolant today. And there's a couple tricks to it. So we already have got the front of the car on ramps and we put the back of the car on jack stands. You can look in your owner's manual to see the jack points. They actually have center jack points to put a floor jack under, and then you can uh, put in your jack stands. But you can, you know, re read about that yourself. So I'm going to take the cover off. And one of the things that we will be paying attention to is the high point, the high point in the engine cooling system, which is this hose. This is for the EGR. It has actually a coolant hose that goes to it. And this is the high point in the engine coolant circuit. So at one point, we'll be opening this to allow air to escape. Uh, but more on that later. Okay, so there's two cooling systems. This is a hybrid, so there's two different cooling systems. There's one cooling system for the engine, which you can see here is the top of the radiator. And you can see this is the overflow bottle for the engine cooling system. This is the one for the inverter which is for your, which cools your hybrid electronics. So we're going to first uh, take the caps off. So take the cap off for this, set it over here. Okay, now we're underneath the car and we have the first step underneath the car, we're gonna have to remove the bottom cover. So that's what we're gonna do. It takes a 10 millimeter wrench. And so I'm just gonna basically just go around and undo all of these bolts. Okay, and we have to remove these mud flaps. There's one on either side, and it's still, all these are 10 millimeter uh, bolts that we're using to get rid of, uh, to get this mud flap off. Okay, there's these clips it looks like and the trick to getting these clips off you have to put a screwdriver on both sides at once and if you do that if you try one side only it won't come out but with two sides at once they'll come out easy okay this should be the last bolt we're taking off here yep and then there goes the cover okay um these are the uh, two pet cocks underneath the car one, this is on the, in the front of the car on the driver's side. There's the top one right here. The bottom petcock is right below the top one. So I'm here and then right below it, even though you may not be able to see it on the video, is the bottom petcock. Okay, um, so now we're still, we're back up on top again. I'm gonna undo the radiator cap. You wanna do this when the engine's cool because when it's hot, it can be under pressure and you can burn yourself. Also, you never want to add new coolant to a hot engine. You absolutely only want to add coolant to an engine when it's cool, when you, when you do your initial filling. So that's the reason why we make sure that the engine's cool when we're doing this. So here's the radiator cap. I got the cap for this. And here's the overflow bottle for the, for the actual engine cooling system right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean this one out. Uh, and then after I clean it out, then I'll continue with the rest of the process. This one you don't have to clean out because when we drain the system, it'll actually drain the, the, uh, the bottle. But on this one, it's an overflow bottle, so it won't drain it. So we want to replace the coolant in that too. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and, and remove it. Okay, um, this is the overflow bottle for the engine cooling system. I actually took it off and cleaned it and rinsed it out with distilled water. So it's all empty now and clean, and I'm going to reinstall it. Okay, um, now it's time to start draining the antifreeze. So I'm just going to un, uh, slowly undo the pet cock, and hopefully it will start draining out of the hose here. We're going to see what happens. Huh. There it is. See? It's draining. Now one word of caution, and that is that Antifreeze is extremely toxic to animals. Uh, it'll destroy their kidneys, cats, dogs, or whatever. So be sure to leave this to be to guard the used antifreeze and keep it covered. Do not leave it out in the tray in your garage because if 
If a pet or an animal or a kid gets into it and drinks it, it'll destroy their kidneys. Okay, uh, this is the overflow bottle for the inverter cooling system. Uh, the bottom pet cock, uh, we already drained it. As you can see, it kind of pretty much drained all out. Um, there's actually two hoses that go to this particular bottle for the inverter. I'm not going to mess with it. Um, so, uh, so now we're going to go ahead and drain the radiator. Okay, um, now I'm closing the pet cock for the uh, inverter cooling system, and now we're going to drain uh, the engine cooling system. Okay, uh, now we're now I'm, I put the hose on the end of the pet cock for the engine cooling system, and now we're going to open it up and drain the engine cooling system. So we're going to open it up, and as you can see. There it is flowing out of the hose. And this is the best way to do it because that way you just don't make a mess. Okay, we're just waiting for it to finish draining. Uh, the engine actually, it may take a little while for it, to, uh, for it to all drain out. Okay, this is a spill proof uh, funnel kit. Uh, this particular one is uh, made by Thorsten. And you absolutely have to use one of these because when you're refilling, you have to actually have the coolant that you're filling higher than the highest point in the cooling system. So you have to use a spill-proof funnel. So what we have to do is, here's the radiator cap. So I have to match it up with the right attachment to hook up to, uh, to the top of the radiator, which is what I'm going to do now. Okay, now we have the, found the correct adapter for the top of the radiator. So we're just going to put this in. And then we just simply have to turn it and it will lock into place just like that. And we just put the top of the funnel in like this and that is your spill proof funnel setup. Okay, now it's time to close the, uh, it's done draining, it's just a little drip. So we're going to go ahead and close the pet cock, the upper pet cock, which is the one for the engine. So I'm going to close it right now. Okay, um, now we're going to get ready. We're going to fill the engine, do an initial fill. We haven't started anything yet we're, as far as starting the engine or anything. And what we're going to do, this is the EGR hose. So we're going to just disconnect this hose uh, when we do our initial fill of the engine because this will pro provide a height spot for air to escape. Okay, if it's hard to remove, I removed the clamp. As you see, I moved the clamp back. But if it's a little bit hard to remove, you can actually try to gently rock it slightly with the pair of pliers just to kind of break it loose and then you can just slowly pull it off. Okay, the uh, EGR uh, coolant hose is off. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a an absorbent towel underneath here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do our initial fill of the engine and we're going to watch this hose very, very carefully as we're slowly filling it. As soon as we see coolant come out of this hose, as soon as we see that, we're going to put the hose back, and then we're going to reconnect it. Okay, uh, we're getting ready to, full, uh, to fill now. We have the EGR uh, coolant hose off. This is the antifreeze we're using, the genuine 50-50 uh, pre-diluted super uh, long life uh, antifreeze coolant, the pink stuff. And that's what I recommend. Uh, they do have aftermarket ones made for Toyota, but it's almost the same price. You can, I got this for about $22 a gallon. So I'd recommend uh, just go ahead and going to the dealership and getting the genuine Toyota uh, coolant. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start uh, filling, doing our initial fill now, very slowly. And you do it ex very, very slowly so that you're allowing air to easily escape as it fills up the, the, uh, the cooling system. Okay, so I, you can see I'm very slowly filling this, and the thing is, is that it's going to uh, slowly go down and burp. You'll see bubbles coming out, and that's perfectly normal. You just uh, fill the engine very, very slowly. See all the bubbles? Okay, and you need to make sure that the height of the coolant in the funnel is higher than this. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to make sure so that we can get, make sure that we're getting all the air out and it's going to start coming out of the hose. Okay, uh, as you can see, uh, coolant is starting to come out of this hose now. So now we're going to reconnect the hose. Okay, now we're going to put the clamp back on.
Okay, now we're going to start filling the inverter uh, coolant, doing our initial fill. And all we're gonna do is we're just basically just gonna very, very slowly fill it up. We're actually initially gonna overfill it slightly because as soon as we uh, start the car and put it in maintenance mode, uh, the level will drop uh, pretty dramatically. So we wanna uh, do initially, we're gonna overfill it very slightly. Okay, as you can see, it's quite overfilled. It's actually probably a little bit too much filled, but that's fine because it's gonna go down as soon as we put start the car and put it in maintenance mode. Okay, now we're going to put the car into maintenance mode. We're going to press the start button twice with our feet off the pedals. We're going to press the accelerator twice. We're going to put the foot on the brake, shift into neutral, take the foot off the brake, press the accelerator to the floor twice, put the foot back on the brake, shift into park, put the accelerator two more times, and then push uh, the brake and push the start button. Now we're in maintenance mode. now I'm going to use this pedal depressor and I'm going to press down the accelerator all the way to the floor and Okay, uh, we're in the process of filling. We have the accelerator depressed all the way to the floor with the pedal depressor. And you can see that the engine did rev high for a while and then it went down on its own, that's normal. The uh, fan has come on and gone off and now it's on again. And as soon as the fan goes off, we should be good. And one thing you wanna look for is in the inverter, you'll see that, you can see right here that the yeah, that inside this, uh, the inverter cooling system bottle, you see swirling coolant. That's a good sign. That means you got the air out of the system and that all the pumps and everything are opening fine and working. So we're done with the process. We made sure that the, uh, we, we pressed the pedal to the floor. We made sure that the cooling fan went, came on, went off, came on and went off again. So now we're okay, I took the pedal depressor off, and now to get out of maintenance mode, you just basically simply press the power button. Not to make them, uh, we need to get this nice clean coolant out of this funnel without spilling. So the way you do that is you squeeze your top radiator hose, and then you basically plug the thing out, and now when you undo it, it's going to it will not make a mess because it will actually suck the little bit that you had back in there into the radiator. Okay, and as you can see, I re just removed this and it didn't spill at all. Okay, and as you can see, I put the, this fresh coolant that was in the funnel back into the bottle with the other uh, new coolant because it's still perfectly good coolant to use. Okay. It looks like we're finished now. Um, the overflow bottle for the engine is filled. This is filled. I, the radiator was topped off. Everything is, is done. Now to put this style cap back for the um, inverter cooling system, you just screw it on until it clicks. And you'll actually hear a positive click. That's it. And now it's on and now we're done. Okay, um, this is the used coolant. And I just want to remind people, I'm gonna take this to uh, to the uh, to a uh, hazardous waste um, uh, place where you can actually uh, drop off your hazardous waste. And if you're a consumer, look in your local uh, jurisdiction. But if you're a consumer, uh, as long as it's labeled correctly, up to several gallons, you can usually drop it off, and they'll dispose of it properly. You do not want to put it down the storm drain. Uh, you don't want to put it in the sanitary sewer either.
All right, that's it. And now I got to just put the cover back and let the car down and then we'll, we're all done. Thanks.